Hey everyone, just wanted to do a quick update video on my Hawk 250 and uh, some of the accessories I got for it. So first things first, I finally got around to getting a plate for it, title, registration, and insurance and everything. So she's completely street legal and uh, ready to ride. And I might as well dive right into it. First things first, uh, one of the first modifications I made was changing this uh, front sprocket to a 17 tooth sprocket. And as you can see, or may or may not know, the keeper is on backwards. I also changed the chain to this, uh, what is it? It's an X-ring, O-ring chain. It's supposed to be a good chain. I'm not sure the manufacturer, but I think I recognize it from uh, some of the RZR parts I bought, some of the high performance RZR parts I bought. So hopefully this is a good chain and holds up. It's supposed to be a good chain. Uh, it is still a 428 uh, size chain. I didn't go with the 520. And uh, like I said, I had to flip the keeper around to put the sprocket on. This chain, since it's an O-ring chain, is so much wider that uh, I don't really have a choice. I won't be able to uh, to run it the other way. The chain will rub up against the, the engine case. But uh, everything's really good and lined up. And uh, it works really well. I've, I've taken it for a couple test drives. Alrighty, so I've done a couple top speed runs after changing to a 17 tooth sprocket. Uh, this should still be the 50 tooth rear stock. I haven't changed that. But uh, anyway, I've done it twice. Once uh, without the airbox modification and once with opening the airbox up. So. The first run I did, the GPS said it topped out at 63 and a half. Uh, that's kind of a bit of an exaggeration. I could tell by the gauge. It was a pretty steady 60 miles an hour. Uh, really had trouble breaking, breaking 60 miles an hour. The second time I ran it, I did the airbox modification and I got 63.1. So it was like uh, a little bit slower. So, you know, that just verifies to me that the GPS seems to be about maybe 5% off. So, uh, let's check out some of the other things. I have, uh, I also put on this uh, USB charger. I have two USB ports and also a cigarette lighter port. It came with the uh, cigarette lighter, but the Hawk vibrates so much it uh, spits it right out right away. And uh, this is pretty cool. It has a fuse here. Also, this switch is on the on position, but it's off. I have it wired up that uh, when you turn the key over, it, it uh, applies power to it. That way, I won't accidentally leave it on and, you know, leave the bike in the garage for a week and then have a dead battery. Or at least I hope not. But, uh, yeah, anyway, I got two USB ports there and a cigarette lighter. So that's pretty cool. And then this is uh, a GPS speedometer that I have. Uh, both of these were like fairly inexpensive. This was like 25 bucks. Uh, I forget what this was. This was like probably like 17 or $18. But uh, over here, this is the coolest part. I have this little stereo and uh, I was so excited about this. It is so cool. Uh, you would be, you wouldn't think that these little speakers would be loud enough for you to hear, but things have really changed over the years. And, uh, this thing is like perfect. It's it's really cool to have a little uh, radio stereo on the bike. I absolutely love it. I, yeah, let's check it out. I'm going to turn the switch over and let's see what happens. So this takes a while before it uh, picks up a signal and uh, gives you a display. The stereo is on and I also, uh, this is really interesting with this um, USB port. I'm going to unplug that for a moment. But uh, it shows the uh, battery voltage there. But when you plug it in, it uh, it's interesting. It kind of switches over to this voltage and then it'll drop down to a really low voltage. So I'm not sure what exactly is going on there. I know these are 5 point, supposed to be like 5.2 volt, I believe, in the USB. So I think that's what it shows that first time. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't, looks like this thing doesn't want to turn on now. This thing's been acting up, so this might not be a good product to buy. <laughs> or maybe that was me jiggling it loose. 
but anyway the display is really nice and big uh plenty bright enough during the day too and i really like it i like being able to see my speed nice and easily uh like i said it look it seems like the speedometer the hawk came with seems to be really accurate as far as i can tell but uh these numbers are kind of tiny and hard to read you know but that definitely is not hard to read you can just glance down and see it so yeah i got both of those and uh yeah, the stereo is really cool. Check it out. Alrighty, I don't want to blast it. The uh, the neighbors are right by there. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's uh, all the mods I've done to the Hawk so far, and she's ready to ride. And unfortunately, now that the uh, riding season is coming to end, she's all ready to go. But I'm going to try and uh, ride the Hawk as much as possible. I've got almost 100 miles on it, so I'm going to give her another oil change today and uh, probably go out for another ride. You know, hopefully I get back in the groove of posting more videos and stuff. But uh, I have more parts ordered, not that many. I have the uh, rear sprocket that's actually here. It's a uh, 43 tooth, so I'll post, uh, you know, a top speed video when I get that installed. And then also I have a, uh, a rear shock coming, and I kind of went the unconventional route. Uh, it's more of like a, like a street bike rear shock or one of the old school rear shocks where you need a, a hook wrench to, to adjust the spring. But it has more travel than what most other people have been running, and it's a lot shorter. I'm kind of a little nervous about it. Uh, it's a 270 millimeter, so I'll be dropping almost two inches. And uh, we'll see what that does to the bike. That ought to be interesting. But uh, anyway, I think that's going to do it for now. So thanks for watching. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later.